<laughs> but before we dive into it, just the usual start, some math speed dating questions, Bernie. So, okay. question one, what is your favourite number and why? 91. 91, go on, tell me more. Uh, it's a prime number, and whenever you ask primary kids, can you list all the prime numbers between in the 90s for me, they'll always put 91 down as one of the prime numbers. Ah. They just don't see that, it, that it's, it's got factors. So it's an interesting number, because if you ask them then, so what are 12 sevens, and they'll say 84, so what are 13 sevens? And they go, oh. Ah. So it's one of my favorite ones. And because I was coming on here and had to think about better reasons than that, <laughs> it was that I realized that it was the product of seven and 13. And seven is considered a lucky number, and 13 is considered an unlucky number. Nice. So that's a nice, interesting thing about it. Uh, if you multiply nine and one, you get nine, which is a square number. If you turn 19 upside down, 91 upside down, yeah. you'll get 16, which is also a square number. So it's got lots of little things playing things, particularly for playing with young children. It's a nice number. I think we might have peaked there, Bernie. That's probably the best <laughs> let's, answer let's, let's to that. Let's stop there. Let's quit. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Uh, question number two. What was your favourite topic in maths as a student? Yes, I didn't have a favourite topic in maths because I really didn't like maths at all. Now, is that true? Just no, I'm absolutely true. Um, I'm heavily dyslexic, as we discussed. And when I was being taught maths in the 50s and 60s, everything was by rote. Um, and so I can't learn by rote. So I could continue, continue to ask the, the teacher, but why do you do that? Mm. And uh, I was continually ducking blackboard dusters <laughs> coming my way because they, they didn't want to answer that question. I, I don't think they actually could. So they found that very annoying. So yeah, not really great. I think later on, uh, I, I love calculus because it was so esoteric and different yes. to everything. But because of my love of maths and not working very hard, although I, I loved it, I mostly spent uh, my A-level career copying from Nick Frailing. Um, so thanks, Nick, if you're still there. <laughs> uh, so it, me and maths weren't really great at school. How come you did it at A-level? Um, because I didn't want to go out to work, so I stayed ah, on at school. <laughs> got it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not your typical sort of academic uh, elite guy here. Oh, that's, fast, that's <laughs> fascinating. Well, we might dig into that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, and final question for you. Um, if you weren't involved in teaching and maths education, what, what would you like to be doing? Uh, probably music. Um, I've got a studio at home, you've seen a picture of oh, that. Oh, yeah, flipping out um, you have, haven't you? Really into it. I've done it all my life, but I discovered early on that I could earn money doing teaching, but there was no way I was ever going to earn money uh, doing music. So I've kept it as a hobby. I did, in fact, sing in a band that was in Dover Street Wine Bar uh, near the Ritz until, until not so long ago. Jeez. But um, I realised that uh, teaching was my, what I was really in love with, and music I was in love with, but there was never going to be a career in that. I'll tell you what, I reckon I could put together a good band from former podcast guests here, because you've got <laughs> Mark you, McCourt, Mark McCourt, good. Tom Sherrington, Dylan Willing used to be in like a rock band oh, as really? well, so oh, okay. maybe I'll look for that, yeah, look into that, a little concert maybe yeah, at we, some yeah, stage. Yeah, so I'm up for that, 